All right. Thanks for coming out on somewhat short notice. And no file is not the ideal time, but wanted you guys to uh, have a chance to meet Travian. He literally just got in today, um, and then he's going to hit the road recruiting. So before we get busy with recruiting, wanted you guys to have a chance to visit with him. I'll talk about him here uh, in, a, in a second. But again, thanks for coming out. Um, like Steve said, just got back from the Southern Company Peach Bowl Challenge and had a fun time over there. And, Getting connect, getting to uh, connect with a bunch of coaches and visit for the last couple of days, and uh, sat with uh, Coach Spurrier and Dan Mullen and Urban Meyer and our wives at dinner last night, and then played with Tom O'Brien, the former NC State coach, today, and uh, our foursome included Dabo, Coach Sweeney. So we had a lot of fun on the course as well, and and uh, a great time for for a great cause, all money going to charity, everything that Gary Stokin with uh, Peach Bowl and his group uh, touches is, is amazing. So they've done amazing things uh, from, from a charitable standpoint and excited to be a part of that and, and contribute to it as well. Uh, finishing up everything academically this semester with our guys. Want to congratulate. We've got 11 players that will be graduating uh, this weekend. Proud of them. 11 players with eligibility remaining as well. So they'll play this season as a graduate of the University of South Carolina. So kudos to them and everyone uh, in our Doty Academic Center for what they're doing with our guys uh, as they come into graduation. I think exams are got proud of what our guys have done from that standpoint. Had all of our exit meetings uh, right after the spring game, and those went well uh, also. So our players get a chance to, to get away for a little bit now in the month of May if they want. A lot of them, they, they stay up here anyway. They, they tell me they don't want to go anywhere. They'd rather be here in Columbia anyway. So uh, uh Want them to be able to get home if they can, though, and see their families for a little bit before they get back here uh, Memorial Day weekend. Our guys will come back, and then we'll start summer school that Tuesday after Memorial Day as well. But pleased about where we are right now and, and, um, and, and again, where we're, where we're headed. Eager to get out on the road and start the Gamecock Club circuit uh, tomorrow night up in Charlotte. So hope to see some of you guys up there at that one and, and throughout the state as uh, our st state of South Carolina here over the next month as well. So can't wait to get out there and visit with so many great Gamecock fans as well. Uh, couldn't be more excited about having this guy here today as well. Uh, truly bringing him home. It's amazing how many text messages I've gotten from uh, former players, uh, of teammates of his, guys that played here when I was here, thanking me, excited. Uh, employees here at the University of South Carolina that do Trave as a player and now as a coach that are thanking me for bringing him back and all that as well. So home run hire to be able to get him uh, back when our – uh, he's a great player here, as we know, great student, loves Carolina. He is uh, garnet and black through and through, was a great player here, and I know he's going to be an even better coach and recruiter for us as well. Uh, so much respect for him as a person when he was here as a player, and I was an assistant coach, but then what he's done in his coaching career as well. I've got respect for the guys that they just when they decide to get into coaching, they don't want anything handed to them. They work for it. And he had a great career as a player, played in the NFL. Uh, it's a lot of times guys, they maybe finish up playing in the NFL and they think they're just supposed to go right to the top in the coaching world. And, and he did and he earned it, worked as a graduate assistant, worked at Albany State, went to Georgia State as an assistant coach, did a great job with the defensive line at Tulane. Uh, last season as well. So great family. Uh, wife is a Gamecock also and former athlete here as well. So couldn't be more excited for us to bring him home and couldn't be more excited for Travian to come home as well. When our uh, previous assistant coach uh, left, there was one phone call I made and one phone call only, and it was to him. And I actually called him before we had a position open. When I thought there might be a position open, I called. Um, and I'm like, man, I'm sorry if I have to, if this thing doesn't happen, but I'm excited and, and want to reach out just to make sure that this is something you're interested in if this does happen. And when it happened, it took me about 15 seconds to pick up the phone and call him, Clayton and I. Met with him on a Zoom that afternoon, and uh, about five minutes after we got off the Zoom, I called him back and offered him the job, I guess. So just wanted to make sure, or I guess it was five, maybe a little bit longer. I'm not sure. It wasn't long. Just wanted to make sure I knew what, we, what this position, what I wanted out of this position. 
and uh, wanted Clayton to feel good with it as well, and he absolutely did. And that's what you know, Clayton and I said. We can talk to a bunch of people, but it's going to continue to come back to this guy every single time. And uh, uh, we got a great group of defensive linemen that he'll be coaching this upcoming season, and he's going to make them better. They've done some great things over the last couple of years, but he's going to take them uh, to a different level. He saw this program when the way it was built up from day one and uh, and competing for championships, and, and he's going to uh, be a key key part of us getting back to that as well. So excited about him being here. I'll let him visit with you here in a second before I sit down and bring him up. Any questions that you guys have about anything, this Travian or the program in general? How about that, huh? Right. <laughs> Shane, did you, when you were here as an assistant and Travian was here as a player, did you say, you know, this guy has the makeup to be a really terrific coach one day? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I thought he'd be successful in whatever he did just because of his mentality. I mean, he was a guy that was all business all the time and, and uh, great work ethic, was a great student, um, academic all SEC, right? All right, so a great student as well. But just I thought he was just very professional in everything that he did and uh, always had a lot of respect for him uh, because of the way that he played on the field, but the way he handled himself and took care of business off the field as well. Shane, we've seen over the last couple of hires that you've made, there's been some type of NFL background in, in, in with it. Is that just a coincidence, or how much did that also play into the decision to be able to bring him back home? I think it's uh, really it's coincidence. And in his case, whether he had played in the NFL or, or not wouldn't have made a difference. Um, I think it helps, certainly, because if when you when you talk about, okay, let's check all the boxes, what are you looking for in this hire, uh, he checks them all in regards to uh, we have a chance to upgrade in every every area of recruiting ties and personality and love of this place and played at a high level here in college as a player, uh, played in the NFL at the position he's going to be coaching um, and then has done a great job as a coach and as a recruiter already in his time. So, I mean, he checks all the boxes. The NFL is an added – you know, added a, a bonus without a doubt. But no, not necessarily uh, in the other hires as well. Um, you know, Sterling was, the, I guess, was the most recent hire, Sterling and Jody. And those were guys that I knew previously and, and had ties. And I knew they were great recruiters and great coaches. And, it, you know, it helped that they had been in the NFL. But it's not necessarily a, you know, a thing that I'm seeking when we're trying to make hires, trying to find the best person for the position at that time. Shane, two for you, but with Trayvon, you mentioned the recruiting aspect of it. What have you seen in the interview process or talking to people about him as a recruiter and to just the injury update? Is there any update to Jalen Nichols and the team? Yeah, recruiting-wise, I think he'll be great. Um, his local ties, you know, uh, being from this part of the country and then having worked at Georgia State and Albany State and recruiting this area and then being at Tulane and opening up more doors as well. Um, you know, a guy, when we – I knew him but as a player, but I hadn't really been around him as a coach, Colin. So making calls to people that had been around him and knew him and, and everything, I felt sounded great from a recruiting standpoint. And to me, it's easy to recruit to a place that you love. And I know he loves this place. And uh, he's he can he has a story because he went through and – uh, he went through what these guys that he's recruiting are going through. He's been there. And then he excelled and was able to reach all of his goals that all those guys he's going to be recruiting want to accomplish for sure. So he'll he'll kill it from that standpoint. Uh, Injury-wise, uh, Jalen specifically, as you guys saw in the spring game, suffered a you know pretty significant injury. Um, uh, he won't be ready for the beginning of the season, I'll say that. And, you know, optimistic that, that – uh, the, the recovery process will go well and we'll get him back um, hopefully you know before the season before the season is over but he won't be ready to start the season Shane uh, from your time you know working with with Travian what back when you were a coach here and you were a player Travian what was the one story that you saw stand out something from practice something from a game you know emotionally you know physically just anything that, that really stood out about his time as a player oh David you're killing me man um I wish I had a specific one. I should I should have thought about that one before I came in here. I really don't. You know, to me, I just kind of go back to, um, 
you know, just what was asked earlier, just the, the way he carried himself and his mindset and his demeanor and work ethic and then all that as well. He was a, a great leader on this on, on this football team and and a guy that just has so much respect. You know, I sat with like I said, I sat with Coach Spurrier and Coach Meyer and Coach Mullen last night, and Coach Spurrier and I were talking about him as well, and and he was excited that he was coming back um, as well. So got the respect of a lot of people, and there's a lot of moments that that went into the respect that he that people have for him and I'll I'll have one but I don't have one off the top of my head right now sorry I'm fresh off the golf course today but it's got other things on my mind the putts we missed today <laughs> uh kind of going the other way off the NFL thing you know he's coached at D2 he's coached Sunbelt he's been in the NFL how much has having a guy who's been at pretty much every level of the sport help with recruiting I think great um you know because to me those um um when you when you have every level, you're you got to do a great job developing. And there's a lot of good players out there that maybe fall through the cracks and go to an Albany State that could be playing at a higher level, or go to a Georgia State that could be playing in the SEC. Uh, Jordan Strom was just out there in the hallway, and and Jordan was at Georgia State when when Travian was there, and, and I called Jordan about Trave during the process. And Jordan flat out said, if it wasn't for this guy right here, he wouldn't have had the year that he had at Georgia State where he led the country in what sacks or tackles for loss or whatever it was. He's like, it was because of this guy. And, um, and um, so I think when you get in there and you develop guys at different levels, it certainly helps because you're now recruiting at the highest level as well. And you find ways to be resourceful as, uh, as well and find a way to make things work. And, in, in every which way. So he's at the top of the top right here in the SEC, and, and that experience is that he's, hit, he's had at other schools will do nothing but but help him. I think the same thing with Montario. Montario coached at a lower level and a, a lot of lower levels before we hired him here also and uh, has done a great job with that. Um, you mentioned Trey's going out recruiting right after this. So what's kind of the process of getting someone up to speed that quickly, especially, you know, with spring practice already done, getting them integrated with the team and everything too? Yeah, it's a tough time right now just because you don't expect to have a position open on your staff after spring practice. Um, you know, you worry about the portal being open. You worry about uh, players leaving. You don't worry about coaches leaving in the portal. So that's disappointing to say the least. Um, but when you do bring a guy in like Trey, one, he's familiar with this place, so that helps without a doubt. He's not coming into a place that he doesn't know. He probably knows more about this place than I do from his time here as well. Uh, we've got some players that are still around, so he's able to connect with the players that, that are here. And then, and then he's able to hit the road recruiting. So he spent the day today, got in with this morning, and spent some time with Taylor Edwards this afternoon, just kind of getting caught up to speed on our personnel, the guys that we're recruiting, things like that as well. And then he's able to, and then we'll be able to get him out on the road. So it's not an ideal time, Emily, but it's a slower time, if you will, because the players, for the most part, we're not practicing, classes are over. Uh, so it's not much happening other than just recruiting. You know, it's probably from a personal standpoint, it's a little bit tougher because normally I'm job comes open a coach comes in January or February and you got some time to get settled before spring practice and all that it's a little bit of a different time schools are getting out and things like that as well but it's uh it's unique but but uh he'll hit the ground running and again when he goes out recruiting he'll get familiar with the players but he's already familiar with the place that he's working it's not like he's coming to a new new spot that he doesn't know anything about as you guys have i guess cleared this last portal window, um, well, I guess sort of incomplete in some ways, but as, as you've experienced that portion of, of the portal and, and seen what it's like and experiencing, what what are your thoughts on it and, and just kind of how, how things have, have gone for you guys that way? I feel good. Um, had 101 individual meetings the week after the spring game and sat every met with every single player, you know, in my office and, and had open and honest conversations, which we're always going to have, you know, about – their role here and are they happy and and where's their head at with things and then there's open and honest conversations with guys that you know you kind of talk about where their role wh what their role is right now at this point and and what does it look like going forward and I want every player that's in our program to enjoy the experience they have in our program and be able to you know do well in school graduate win football games play uh, at a high level, and if a guy feels like he be has a better opportunity to do that somewhere else, then we wish him well and we'll help in any way. But I thought the meetings were were good. Um, 
and God, it showed. We've got a lot of guys here in our program that love being a part of this program and love the direction of the program and, and love what we're doing right now. And, um, you know, couldn't be more excited about the group. And and it's certainly, I'll be honest, I mean, that when that portal window's open, it's a, a long two weeks, if you will, because there's a lot happening. And, and you certainly, you want everybody to come back and you worry about getting phone calls and things like that. And being with some of those coaches the last couple of days at the golf thing, I mean, just sharing stories with them and hearing different things and things like that. It's a, it's a you know, odd, strange, new two weeks for all of us in a lot of ways, but uh, survived it. And, and at the same time, we're always going to do here in this program, make this a program that guys want to be a part of, that they know they're going to be coached really, really hard. And you guys have heard me say it before, be held accountable. It's going to be demanding, and it's not easy being a part of this program, but I uh, want guys that want to be here. And I feel like we've got a lot of them, though we do. Chan, I know you're pretty straight up with guys as far as when they're looking at other jobs and things like that. I guess what was kind of the timeline as far as when Jimmy kind of came to you all and you figured this might be something that you guys needed to fill and – sort of how it all came together? It was probably two weeks ago this upcoming Thursday, so about 12 days ago. Um, Coach Kelly at LSU reached out to me. Said I knew he had an opening because their coach had left before spring practice, somebody that I had worked with at Oklahoma, as a matter of fact, um, to go to the NFL. And Coach Kelly hadn't finished the, the position, so he had reached out and said that he had an interest in just talking to Jimmy about it. And that was 12 days ago, I think they um, – and then it was about six days later, I guess, when when everything kind of came, you know, to a head. So that would have been, I think, Thursday night I called Travian. And then Friday um, we were on a Zoom that afternoon. And, um, and then Friday night kind of got everything uh, – settled finalized whatever wanted to be respectful to you know Tulane and and, and do right by them as well because it's tough timing on that end as well just like it was for us on losing a coach but wanted to do right by them you know last weekend allow him to kind of settle things there in Tulane on his time frame on, on his time frame and, and then get him here as quick as possible good yep yeah. Absolutely. Well, please welcome our welcome home, our new defensive line coach, Travian Robertson. Thank you, Coach. You got it, man. Appreciate you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. It's good to be back, um, Coach Beamer. I thank you uh, for bringing me back home. Um, for me, um, this is not something that that's been um, that's just happened because I was coaching. This is something I dreamed about for a long time. I remember. Um, when I was in the league playing. And I had, um, I had talked to plenty of people asking me what I want to do when I, when I was finished. And I had no idea at the time, but I told a guy, a real good friend of mine, I said, I think I want to coach. And I think Coach Spurrier was still here at the time. And he kept telling me to call Coach Spurrier, stay in contact with Coach Spurrier. And for whatever reason, you know, I never um, contacted Coach Spurrier because just like Coach, said I wanted to do it in a different way. I didn't want to just be entitled to a position just because I played here or just because I you know, was a captain here or graduated from here. Um, I wanted to go through and make sure I wanted to coach because um, it's not for everybody. And um, so for me, um, I could say this, as I was driving to the airport this morning, um, I was thinking of my, my road to coaching and um, one thing I came up with is it was always connected with Gamecocks. And I'm going to tell you the story. Um, as soon as I got done at 15 playing ball, um, I lived like two miles from Peachtree Ridge High School where Coach Fleetwood, um, he was a kicker here. And a lot of, I didn't know that. And I walked in his office and um, told him I was interested in coaching. So that's a former Gamecock right there that gave me an opportunity. Um, then... Um, Coach Elliott had took the head coaching job from here to Georgia State. And um, I knew he was busy. I knew just like getting the head coaching job, everybody was hitting him up. So I knew he wasn't going to respond to my Facebook message. I knew he wasn't going to respond to my text. And so he had hired a former game coach, Cedric Williams. And Cedric answered my phone call and um, got me connected with Coach Elliott. So that's another game coach that uh, helped me get connected with my second job. And um, Coach Elliott, he, he didn't play here, but he coached here, and he will always be a Gamecock. So him hiring me as his D-line coach in 2019, um, 
really helped me. And I called him yesterday and thanked him for that because without him believing in me um, as a young guy just finishing the NFL, um, I wouldn't be here right now. So I thank Coach Elliott for that, Coach Said for answering my phone call. But then leaving Georgia State to go to Albany as my first ever you know, head D-line job, um, no one knows this, but Corey Peoples was a, a former game cop. That, um, and all this is just something I thought of this morning. And I was like, man, Gamecock's been helping me, you know, connect with my coaching career. And so Corey People was the defensive coordinator at Albany State, and I thank him for he didn't know much about me as a coach. Um, he just heard good things about me, you know. He just said, hey, I remember the phone call. He said, look, man, you know, you're Gamecock, you're coaching, and I want to help you. And so uh, – I'm thankful for that and um, just to go back to Georgia State. And then again, you know, coached at Georgia State for three years and all of a sudden I get another text message from another former game cop, Chris Hampton. Um, Chris Hampton, you know, he played here when I was here. He was a, a senior when I was a freshman and all I remember is, man, this dude is smart, very smart dude. Um, I saw him coach as, as a player I actually witnessed him coach some of the greatest game cops that ever came through here. And um, to have the opportunity to coach with him last year was huge for me. Um, so without game cops and the way we connect and the way we do things, I wouldn't be here right now. So Coach Beamer, I'd like to thank you, but I just want to thank all the game cops that, that um, helped me get here because, um, like I said, this was a dream that um, I've been I've been praying for it for a long time, a long time. And uh, like I said, I didn't know where I want to coach or not, what I wanted to do. But as I was playing, I always kept my notes as a player. I just kept them. And I, I pull them out today to show guys, like, hey, this is the way we take notes. But I always prepare to be in this position. Um, but I'm, I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I can't wait to get my family down here. Um, this is not a place where I just played at. I have roots here. Um, I chose to come here in 2007, and I remember Coach Lauren telling me, he said, Travian, when you choose whatever school you choose, that's the school where you're going to meet your wife. That's the school where you're going to have the best man in your wedding. That's the school where you're going to create lifelong memories. And um, I met my wife here. She didn't just run track here. She's an SEC champion, uh, SEC champion also. Um, she graduated from here. So this is home for me. Uh, I got married here, right on campus in the Horseshoe. Um, you know, this city of Columbia has been great to my family. Um, I got to give a shout out to Andy Deli at Deli's. Um, I have to because he allowed me to have my son's first birthday party there. He allowed me to have my baby shower there, and he always welcomed me. And then heard the news that he uh, passed away. It hit me hard um, because he always been great to me. And so just to be back home where I started at and um, to think that God, you know, I always pray specifically for things I wanted and I wanted this so bad and I wanted to do it the right way. And I, and I know all the Gamecocks and players and former Gamecocks, I understand, but it's all God's timing. You know, everyone's saying about time and um, I don't look at it that way. I think God has moved me at the time he wanted me to be wherever I wanted to be. And everyone has always said, what's next for you? And all my answer to this day is, whenever God moved me, that's when I'm gonna go. So when Coach Beamer called me, um, I was in the house by myself and um, my wife and kids was at track practice. And um, as, soon as, he, as soon as I hooked up the phone, I just, I got on my knees and started praying because it was all God. And so um, I'm glad to be back. Um, but I just want to say thank you to all the Gamecocks, all the former Gamecocks. Um, anyone that's out there that's doing, you know, we got a lot of Gamecocks out there doing great things. Um, coaching, entrepreneurs, um, even on the track side, basketball side, Gamecocks is nationwide. And um, a lot of things that, you know, most Gamecock fans don't see, but we got people out here doing really, really good things that actually walked through these bills and that graduated from here and they married now got businesses, and they're doing good. And one thing I love is what I just said, we always take care of each other. And um, I love that about this place. And uh, my whole purpose of being here is to be 
a great coach on the Beamer ball. You know, I played on the Coach Spurry area. It was a great area. We had a lot of great times. But the way where this place is going right now with Coach um, Beamer, um, it's exciting. It's very exciting. And um, I thank God for the timing because I feel great when I walked in here. It was good vibes, good vibes everywhere. And um, I'm, just, I'm just so excited to be here. But I just want to say thank you to all the former Gamecocks um, that played when I played, everybody that supported me, all the Gamecock Nation that um, tweeted me, texted me, called me, and um, really been rooting for me to get this position for a long time. I'm not just here because I'm a former player. I'm here because I was a great player here, and I want to be even better coach here. Um, I left a statement. I thought I left a statement as a player, but I want to make a bigger impact as a coach and, um, and give back to these kids. Um, a lot of guys that come in, they want – they want to do things. They want to make it to the NFL. And, um, you know, I was the same way. I was the same way as a player. And um, I figured it out. And I, I put my head down and I kept working. And um, no matter what came my way, good, bad, or ugly, I just kept going. And um, it's no day it's going to be a perfect day. But that's the way I operate. And um, I'm looking forward to coaching these guys up. I'm looking forward for a lot of ball games. I'm looking forward for recruiting in the great state of South Carolina um, and all over. But I love this place. Um, my wife loved this place. And we're going to be forever grateful for Coach Beamer, Coach Clayton White, giving me the opportunity to come back. How's it going, Trey? How you doing? David Kloniger from the Post of Courier. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, Coach Beamer mentioned that uh, you know he made one phone call. Once you got that phone call, were you immediately thinking, yes, I mean, if, if he offers, and once he made that offer, how soon did it take you to answer? Well, like I said, I was on the phone with my wife, and I told him the story in the call. She she was like, hey, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to take the boys to track, and you got dinner, and she had the dinner. In the, and I was calling her to figure out how to what what to put the food on, like the temperature. <laughs> And I said, hold on, Coach Beamer is calling me. And um, she's like, all right, call me back, call me back. And um, like I said, I was in the house by myself, and um, it took me about two hours to cook that food out there. He called me. <laughs> so, um, man, I was excited. My heart dropped. And it, and it was time when a draft was going on or just about to start. And um, I felt like I was getting drafted all over again. Hey, Trey, been Mike Yuva, Gamecock Central. You mentioned timing. Mm -hmm. I mean, as an alum, I'm sure you've been paying attention to the program the best you can while also doing your other coaching duties. But to see where the program is now right. and also knowing how big of a, a part you were when mm -hmm. South Carolina had the heyday for football here, how excited are you to be coming home now? I'm super excited. Um, obviously, I was coaching, and um, it was hard for me to kind of watch every game. But uh, when I had time to watch um, the things that I saw, the things that um, I witnessed, um, I saw this program going in the right direction, especially after, you know, finishing the way we finished last year. Um, so, you know, just like coaches do their research on their hires, I do my research too. And um, a lot of things I've been hearing is this place is going in the right direction. And I witnessed it, and um, now I'm here to help be a part of it. Uh, Alan Cole, GameCockScoop.com. Uh, you mentioned this program developing, kind of evolving since you've been here, but how have you developed and evolved as a coach from maybe when you started at Georgia State, going to Albany State versus where you are now in terms of coaching young men? So I think for me, it didn't start when I started coaching. For me, I was blessed to be coached by some great coaches. Uh, Ray Hamilton was one of my coaches. First of all, Coach Lauren, he was a great coach here. You know, me and him developed a relationship a long time ago. When he was at North Carolina, he offered me when I was a freshman in high school. And my biggest thing on coaching um, is relationship with my players. Um, my coaches made a huge impact on me growing up because I spent a lot of time. I spent more time with coaches than I did with my parents. And so when I say that, I have a high school coach that coached me that's literally working in Columbia right now. And, you know, we stay in contact every, every month, every other day, and he's – coached me in high school. Me and Coach Lauren talked probably twice a month. And so the relationship that I built with my coaches was what helped me become the man I am today. And so when I became a coach myself, I wanted to do the same thing because I know how special it felt for me to know that a coach cared. And the coach didn't look at me just as a, a football player. The coach helped me with life things. The coach helped me with jobs. The coach talked to me about being a father. My coach talked to me about being you know, a husband. And so once I got the opportunity, I wanted to give back the same way my coaches gave to me. 
As um, far as my demeanor, high coach, I mean, Brian Cox, Ray Hamilton, Coach Lauren, uh, even my high school coach, coach, Coach Paris, they really poured a lot into me as a player. And so I'm just really giving back now and trying to do the same things that my coach did to me to make me a great player. Hey, I'm Helmer Granahan with the Bigspur.com. Um, you, you mentioned the story about Coach Long, and before you signed here, I guess I just wanted to know if you had any good Coach Long stories after you were here and playing for him and, and around him uh, for this this few years. No, I mean Coach Long was uh, he was great for me. Um, I really don't have no no stories for about Coach Long. He was he's a special guy for me, you know. And our relationship that we had is a lot different than others. But uh, one thing I can say, it was it was fun. It was real fun. He he helped us practice hard. Um, as you know, Clowney, Melvin, all of us. And one thing I do know is um, he called me one night and he told me, he said, Travian, um, he said, I really didn't coach you guys. He said, you guys played your butt off. I just made, made sure y'all stayed out of trouble. And he was like, so you guys was great players. And um, he said, you guys helped me out more as a coach than I did you guys as a player. So he really, really poured his all into us, and um, we, we played for him. We played fast for him. And, but he, he got a special place in his heart for me because, like I said, he, he offered me when I was a puppy in high school. And um, he was at one school, and then he came over to – he was at one school and he came over to the Great Carolina, and um, um, he offered me here. And once I saw that he believed in me, at multiple stops, I, you know, I trusted him, and um, he helped me become the player that I was when I was here. Hey, Travian. Pete Yacobelli with the AP. Nice to see you nice again. See you. Um, talking about your time here as a player and what you guys accomplished, mm -hmm. how can that help you kind of infuse these guys who you're going to coach with the, with the possibility of what South Carolina can accomplish? How can your experience here – help with that? I think just um, being myself, um, you know, most coaches, if you, if you haven't realized, mo most coaches just really being themselves. Um, as a player like Coach um, Beamer said, um, I was serious, you know, I was a captain and I knew, you know, we had some, we had some down years when I was here, and, but I wasn't in that captain role or that leadership role, but I knew once that, um, you know, I, w I was able to get that role, I knew I had a vision of what I wanted the team to be. And that's all coaching is. Coach Beamer has a vision. Um, Coach White has a vision. I have a vision. And so we all come together. And um, as a player, as a captain, you have a vision of what do you want the team to be. And um, so what's going to help me is just being myself. You know, I have a vision um, to be one of the, you know, best D linemen and um, defensive line in a, in a conference. So if that's my vision, then I'm just going to be myself because we were we was one of the best defensive linemen in the um, conference. So me coaching, um, it's just the same as me playing. I'm just not playing no more. My, my mentality is still dominate mentality coaching. I coach hard. I demand um, excellence in practice. You know, you're going you're gonna to play how you practice. And um, we practice hard every day out here on that field. And so I, I, I don't expect nothing less than that. So just being myself, that's in recruiting. Coaching is just being yourself. Um, players want realness these days. They don't want fake coaches. They see through that. And so um, as a player, I, I, I saw through that. I, I, I read through all the crap that if coach was giving me. And um, you kind of hold coaches accountable. So for me, I'm just going to be myself. Um, I could tell you this story. Um, throughout coaching, you do get frustrated sometimes. And i never forget one time I came home and my wife saw it on my face. And she was like, what's going on? I was like, I just. I just don't think I'd be myself. I was really frustrated. And she looked at me, she was like, being yourself was what got you here. And um, that was the biggest advice that my wife gave me. Like I said, she's a champion. So she, she gives me advice and, um, and it woke me up. And I'm like, you're right. So I'm not going to change who I am as a person. I'm just going to follow Coach Beamer's vision and I'm just going to be me. Hey, Travian, Ben Portnoy from the state. Um, you mentioned Coach Elliott. I mean, I know he gave you your first coaching job, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, working for him and getting that first shot mm -hmm. uh, coming out of the NFL, what was that kind of genesis of getting that and working with him? And I guess kind of what, it, what impact has he had on you? I mean, I know he coached brother as well at, right, at, at App right, State and all. Right. But. 
Um, you know, we, we built the relationship, me and Coach Elliott built like a love-hate relationship when um, I was here playing. Um, he was the O-line coach, I played D-line, and you know, he's a fiery guy, so I liked it. And um, he came and we talked junk to each other. So it didn't, it was, that was him as a person, and um, we all know, and um, you know, and so once I got to Georgia State, you know, so grateful that he gave me the opportunity to GA. And the first thing he told me was, I want you to coach. And um, he helped me out tremendously with that. But, um, you know, it was fun. It was fun. And um, I wanted to grow as a coach. And so he helped me, uh, you know, a lot. He called me back. After I left, he called me back. So I was thankful for that. So he, that shows me that he trusted and believed in what I was doing. Hey, Emily Adams from the Greenville News. Um, Shane mentioned your kind of liking you as a recruiter mm -hmm. specifically. Are there differences in sort of transitioning to recruiting at the Power Five level versus, you know, how you recruit at Tulane or Georgia State, or do those skills kind of carry up to this level as well? I, I don't I don't think it's no difference. Like I said, uh, um, you know, I, as soon as I stepped foot in the building, um, you know, we started on recruiting right away. And so, um, like I said, it's just being yourself recruiting, uh, whether it's on D2, whether it's on Power Five, you got to be yourself. Um, and so that's what I plan on doing. I understand it is Power Five. I, I've been recruited in the Power Five level. I've been recruited in the SEC level. So um, I know what it takes. I know what it's like, and um, I'm prepared. Colin Taylor from Gamecock Central. Do you remember the food that took you two hours to cook? Uh, salmon. <laughs> salmon. <laughs> and, salmon. Yeah, and I guess I know you probably haven't had a whole lot of time to do your homework on what you're inheriting on this roster, but what – in film study or just watching a game, have you seen from this defensive line group you got? Um, first of all, there's some big guys. Uh, they're strong. And from what I saw, uh, these guys want to win. They want to win and because they play hard. And like um, Coach said, they are good guys. They are really good players. And um, so I'm excited to just push them to be even great Gamecocks. Hey, Travian, Andrew Lyon of Gamecocks Digest on SI.com. Um, obviously, you're going to be in a unique position here because you'll be coaching the interior defensive linemen, whereas there's usually one defensive line coach. So you'll be working very closely with edge coach Sterling Lucas. Mm -hmm. uh, have you gotten to meet him yet, and how excited yeah. are you to get to work with him? Yeah, I met Sterling um, several times. Um, you know, we, we talked, but I'm very excited. Uh, really, we talked 10 minutes before this interview started. And so um, I'm excited to uh, get started with him. I heard a lot of great things about him being a recruiter, um, how he relates to the players, and um, he's a great coach. So I'm, um, I'm supposed to meet up with him here soon um, on the road somewhere. So I'm excited. I'm very excited to work with him. When you're, when you're out uh, trying to evaluate guys to come play, play for you at your position, mm -hmm. What are those main characteristics, traits you're looking for in, in a D tackle? Uh, for me, um, a guys that loves football. Um, um, one thing I learned when I was at Albany State um, is you don't spell love L-O-V-E. You spell love T-I-M-E. And um, you can't go in to your home or and tell your wife, hey, I love you without spending time. So I look for guys that really love football and that wants to be here. You know, that's important. Um, you recruit a lot of guys that wants a lot of different things nowadays. But I'm looking for guys that wants to be here and that wants to win. Travian was just wondering what, when you think about your time here as a player, mm -hmm. what game memory stands out for for you? Oh man, we had some we had some memories, man. Um, the game for me will be, um, I think everybody will say this will be the Alabama game. Um, I mean, can I say two games? Sure. All right, so. Alabama game was one, you know, as you know, there was no one in the nation and it was a three o'clock game and we were the underdogs and um, they had, you know, all the great NFL players. They had Julio, all those guys, they had them. And um, for us, you know, they just thought it was going to come in and roll over us. And we, the great thing about us is we was a close locker room and um, we stuck together. We weren't perfect, but when we did things together as a unit, uh, it was beautiful. The second game would be um, Florida game. Um, that was huge. 
that week, um, all you heard, um, and I was so tired of hearing it was, and I never forget it, was how good Florida was. They got, oh man, they got this and they got that. And I really looked in the locker room and I was like, man, we got Alshon Jeffrey, we got Stephon Gibmore, we got Melvin Ingram, we got me, we got Marcus Lettermore, we got Steven Garcia, all the greats. I'm like, why are we talking about these guys? And so right before the game, you know, five minutes before the game, I brought everybody up and basically said, hey, they're good, but we're good too. And the opening play of that game, um, they ran a kickoff return back for a touchdown. <laughs> sorry, I apologize. I remember that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but um, we overcame it. We did, and we overcame it quick. And um, that game, it was just, it was special um, because I remember Coach saying all we had to do was beat Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida, and we had a shot at playing on the big stage, and we did that. I thank y'all. Thank y'all.